All right, they're here. And so we just got their food in here, their water. We got two heat plates, which if you've never done heat plates, it's so much safer than heat lamps. You have no fear of the lamps busting, causing fires, stuff like that. Um, so you just want to keep them real low when they're this small. And you know, some people dip their beaks in the water, dip their beaks in the food. You really don't have to do that. They're going to find it. Like, as you can tell right there, they're all already drinking. So even being a couple days old, they still figure it out. Um, and so you hear the chirping, that means they're probably cold. So they're finding the heat now. Um, if they're still chirping in about 30 minutes, that means these may be too low or too high. And I may need to lower them down a little bit. Um, but you should have, for the most part, quiet chicks. Okay, now for the unfortunate part. When you get orders in, one or two dead makes sense. But this is too many. There was only three in this batch that were alive. And it looks like there was 27 total in this box. So what is that? 24? 24 dead chicks. So we'll be calling Murray McMurray uh, to see what's up. Most companies usually make it right. I don't know what happened to this batch in the shipment. Um, there wasn't one dead in this one. So obviously something with this shipping in this specific box uh, did not go well. If I had to guess, probably too cold in some form or fashion, but that's 24 dead chicks. So we were able to get that done. We're still in the middle of this whole family thing uh, with Greybeard being in the hospital. So Jed is still holding the fort down here. Hopefully Greybeard gets to come home today, um, but I am headed back to Karen's to keep basically things alive over there because uh, I know he can handle these here and we just divide and conquer. I only had one dead chicken. He had 24. I did have 24. <laughs> <laughs> we are back home. Um, so the last clip you all saw is when we had came in and uh, got the chicks and got them squared away and then she saw that there was a box of basically all dead ones. Um, we have updates for all of that and then also I wanted to run down what you need to have a successful situation with meat chickens. Um, because it's not just having a brooder and some chicks. There's some other stuff uh, that you need to be successful. A lot of it's optional, but a lot of it's going to save you a lot of time. And especially if your goal is to uh, have enough meat chickens for your family for the whole year like we do. This makes your life a lot easier and a lot better when it comes to harvesting time. Okay, let's start with a couple updates before we get down to the details. Uh, Graybeard is back home. Thank you all for all the prayers. Uh, they were much appreciated. Um, he's still got some follow-ups and some things he has to do, but he's home. And that's the blessing on itself. Um, secondly, all those dead chickens that we had arrived, the 24. Um, it isn't common to have that many gone. Something must have had happened to that box um, in the transit. Uh, we know it wasn't on the hatchery uh, because all the other ones were fine. It definitely had something to do with that shipping. However, Jen called uh, their customer service, Murray McMurray, and they are already sending us out uh, replacements next week. So that's great news. Thank you, Murray McMurray, for the awesome customer service and uh, replacing the ones that were gone. They do also send a few extra free, um, just in case a few don't make the travel trip. Uh, but this was obviously more than just a few. That leads me right into our number one thing you need to decide um, when you're looking for meat chicken. And that's what hatchery are you gonna use? Of course, there are options that you can do by just raising your own chickens. You can incubate your own and you can have them uh, hatch at your house and raise them and harvest them that way. That is definitely an option. Or if you're wanting to actually buy meat breeds, meat chickens, and to give you a rundown of meat breeds, most of those don't can't live long enough uh, to actually lay eggs. Now we have had success in the past of this, um, but they're usually bred to grow a little faster than a normal chicken. So what that results into, if you let them go too far, uh, their weight can actually create a heart attack situation for that chicken. So taking an actual meat breed and saying, I'm going to breed these, I'm going to get some roosters and some hens and collect the eggs and incubate them. You're probably not going to have the best rate. You're probably going to have more deaths than you are eggs to incubate. So if you want to go that route, I would do it with normal laying hens. It's going to take you a little bit longer for harvest, but it is the much more sustainable way. Hatcheries. We have two that we use successfully. One is Hoover's Hatchery. Hoover's Hatchery is probably not as common of a name between homesteaders, but it is probably one of the biggest hatcheries that you'll find. I say that because the chicks that you see at Tractor Supply or Royal King are all provided by Hoover's Hatchery. 
So that's kind of cool. Um, they are very large. They can handle everything. They have basically anything that you would want. Um, that is primarily where we get a lot of our laying hens from, not so much our meat birds, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, the other one is Murray McMurray Hatchery. This one is much more common um, amongst homesteaders. I'm sure if you watch people like us on other YouTube channels, you've heard that name before. A lot of uh, homesteaders are affiliated with them. We are not. Um, we've done some things in the past with them, um, but this order was completely purchased from us. The reason we get our meat birds from Murray McMurray is we love their big red broilers. That's what they're called. That's what we have. Um, the big red broiler chick um, has been our favorite meat bird that we've ever had. We've had the Cornish, cross Cornish crosses. Um, we've had uh, all the different like Rudd Rangers, Freedom Rangers, stuff like that. Uh, big red broiler is basically Murray McMurray's version of like the uh, Freedom Rangers. Um, they don't grow as fast as Cornish crosses, but they still about 10 to 12 weeks uh, time frame. They're just our favorite birds that we've had. Cornish crosses, to be honest with you, I don't like them. I don't like them whatsoever. Um, they grow really, really fast but they are a disgusting bird. Uh, they're just nasty. They don't look like a normal chicken. Something doesn't feel right. Um, and it feels, I don't know, like man had too much creation with Cornish crosses and I don't like them. It's personal preference. We know a lot of people have great success and love them very much. Um, but our meat bird choice is the big red broiler. They grow a lot just like a normal chicken does. Number two on your list. Hopefully you got a piece of paper and you're writing this stuff down. Number two is you need a brooder and you need to have where their home's gonna be once they get to age. To age is about three to four weeks is when you're gonna take them out of that brooder and you're gonna move them into something more permanent. A lot of that is also gonna be depending on your weather and how their true feathers are starting to come in. Because the biggest thing is that chicks, they can't really control their body temps and they don't have true feathers to really hone in and insulate them to keep them warm. So it's February here, pretty chilly. So ours might stay in there maybe more like five weeks, depending, we'll see how our weather goes. But you need a brooder that you can start them off with, um, and then you need to have figure out what your outside home's gonna be. Couple options. You can have a permanent uh, coop with fencing to where they can get some grass, or you can keep them in a coop all the time and have a, mo a mobile chicken coop that you're just moving every day. If you are gonna keep them enclosed and you're gonna move them or have them in an enclosed capture, you need to be moving that every day. If not, you're gonna have a mud fest wherever you are. We do a little bit of both. So our primary structure is primarily where it's going to be but it is movable so we move it around but we normally keep the fence in the same spot um, to allow them to have plenty of grass with the short amount of time that they're living um, they don't have a whole lot of time to destroy the pasture area but they do uh, where the home is so we move that home around uh, just to make sure that they can get plenty of uh, plenty of grass and not be sitting around in the mud number four you need to make sure that you have plenty of supplies when it comes to heat plates I'm not even going to say heat lamps. Don't even get them. They're too much of a risk. And if there's an alternative, go that route. Um, heat plates are the best thing you saw them. And I'm hopefully throwing up pictures to show you kind of some of the examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, but heat plates are a great thing to have. Um, you need them if you're going to get any kind of baby chicken, not just meat chickens. They have to have that warmth or they're not going to survive. You need to make sure you have small enough uh, feeders and waterers that'll fit in whatever brooder that you're creating. So you can't have massive, they are gonna be smaller. You need to make sure that you have something that works out for them. Fairly cheap, you can go track supply and find anything you want, or you can make it yourself. PVC pipe, gutters, stuff like that. Okay, so that's your basic setup for them to live. Now, you're about that 12 week mark, you're getting ready for butchering time. This is where the bulk of your stuff comes in that you need specific to meat chickens. The number one on that is, unfortunately, well, this is personal choice. I like this way, it feels more humane. You don't have to even have this. You could do the D just on a piece of wood um, if you want to, but we use what is called a kill cone. Um, so a kill cone is basically just a piece of tin or metal that is uh, formed in a cone. So you have the big side that goes down to the small side that allows just the head to come out and allows you to be able to get the D done easily. Uh, and humane. It also keeps them tight so they're not stressed out. Um, that does very much help in this situation. Again, this is just an option. We like using them. Number six, really, really sharp knife. Um, with us, we have kind of our butchering kit. We have some very sharp knives that we use. I use these when it comes to, you know, deer harvesting, chicken harvesting, any, any kind of butchering that we're doing. But you need to make sure you have an extremely sharp knife. The one thing that you want to make sure is whatever you're doing is clean cut and not sawing at it. So I know that sounds graphic but seriously if you're going to take this on 
you need to do it as humanely as possible and one of those is having an extremely sharp knife. I'll throw down in the link some of the ones that we use. The most expensive thing that you're going to purchase in your meat bird area is the plucker. Now, of course, you can scald and hand pluck and do this without any cost whatsoever. But if you're trying to do a year's worth, I wouldn't suggest it. We have done hand plucking. We've used the drill plucker. All that is going to add so much more time to your process. Um, again, if you want to limp into this and maybe just do one bird, test it out. Try it. See how that hand plucking goes and if you want to do that long term. But where we're going to be harvesting about 50 at, 50 at a time, uh, we would be there for months uh, hand plucking all those out. So getting a chicken plucker, we have the yard bird right now. It's great. It can pop two birds in there at a time. It actually works better with two birds. Um, it does not handle turkeys. We've tried turkeys in there. They're too big. So if you want, uh, if you want to do turkeys, you need a bigger plucker to be able to handle that. Um, our turkeys are also very large. So, but that is going to be your most expensive item that you need to get. But I promise you, you won't regret it, and it'll cut your harvesting time down like 25 times. Lastly, you need some sort of scalding technique. What we use is actually a turkey deep fryer. So what you would use for Thanksgiving to deep fry your turkeys. That's what um, we use for scalding. So we use the same setup. Instead of filling the pot up full of oil, we fill it full of water. Um, so you need that. That's uh, the process of scalding the chickens. Then you ice bath them, which you can just use a five gallon bucket. And then you go into scalding. Um, I'm telling you all this so you know the items that you need. However, I have an entire, we have an entire video, chicken harvesting video that is public to YouTube that I'll link down below. Um, if you actually wanna watch the process, um, you can have that. But these are the things that you need. Um, to be able to have a successful meat bird growth to harvesting um, and then fill in your freezers. This is all important to us because we know how these chickens are raised. We know what's in them. Um, we use non-medicated feed. So you want like a crumble, uh, just chick starter. If you're going to your feed store or track supply or roll king or whatever, you're looking for chick starter. Um, just make sure it says non-medicated. Um, we do not do the vaccines um, when we get our chicks. We do not use medicated feed. It is all 100% natural um, because that's why we're doing this. We don't want anything in our birds. We want it to just be food. Look who I found. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, so it's a very, kind of a crucial time where people are trying to figure out how to source their food. Um, it seems that it's getting a little bit more and more difficult. Uh, we were kind of blindsided, I guess, because we did the pantry challenge and then we went back to the store and we were like, oh, this is what people are talking right. about. Right, we haven't been in two months. Yeah, um, you know, we have all our own meat so we don't have to worry about getting stuff like that. Um, but if, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't raise cattle or I can't raise pigs or I don't have room for that. And um, I've noticed that a lot of counties and a lot of states are opening it up to where you can raise chickens in your backyard. It's kind of been a new wave that's gone through so if you're unsure check on that because where you might not have been able to before you might be able to now okay. um, but chickens are so easy to raise you don't have to have acres and you know all this property and all this stuff that seems unattainable you can really do it right in your backyard and you can do it very humanely and healthy and then you know you don't have to do a hundred you can do five fifteen ten at a time and that be your chicken for the next few months and then do it again and just keep a rotational process it's just a whole lot easier way to be able to source meat um, than if you're just getting in a home setting and you're like well i don't have you know five ten acres to raise all kinds of livestock yeah and that's a really good point that she brought up that's something that i didn't put on my list to talk to you about is how many do you get so there's 52 weeks in a year right so at a minimum in our head we need 52 birds in the freezer because that gives us one full bird a week um, we're a family of four and that one bird lasts us a few days like yeah. we're eating leftovers after that for a couple days afterwards um so for larger families you know think about that if you want to eat chicken one time a week you at least need 52 are you a larger family maybe you couldn't have to cook two of them during that meal so that's 104 that you'll need to do the one thing to remember is you don't have to do your entire year's worth in one batch right. so we're going to be doing about four rounds of meat pro or chicken processing so that gives you a little bit more breathing room not have such a huge harvest day to harvest such a large number um, when we started out we did about 10 mm -hmm. i think for our first time that's more than enough for your first time doing it. i don't care how many videos you watch once you actually do it, it's going to take you a long time. Our first time took us, what, about eight hours? It was a long time. <laughs> uh, our latest time, we did uh, about 25. It took us two hours. Yeah. You know, it's just you get better as you go. Funny enough, we're having one of our chickens tonight yeah. for dinner. Uh, we've got about, I don't know, five or seven maybe left in the freezer, uh, which are going to take us right into 
our next chickens. Um, we yeah. might have a few weeks short, but that's okay. We've got other meat and you don't truly have to have meat. Uh, yeah. But this is one that we did. It was 3.1 pounds. We always weigh and label just so we know. It's not too much of a big deal since there's only four of us, but it helps you a little bit with cooking times. And uh, like if you're putting them in an air fryer or something like that, you know how big it is and if it's going to fit. Uh, but this is one of them and we just thaw them and put them in our fridge and eat one a week. Yep. And this, these are shrink bags, what mm -hmm. this is in. You can do a different things, but on Amazon, we just use shrink bags and I use that same scalder. I let them rest uh, that day and then the next day I come back and scald them. They shrink up to them and they, they work great. It's the best thing that we've seen at least. So hopefully if you came to this video, you're interested in it, right? Like you're curious of wanting to start doing it or you have been doing it and you're just curious on how others are doing it. Um, but either way, Hopefully this is helping you understand a little bit more what goes into getting meat chickens. It's always easy to go order them and it's always easy to have them in your house because if you have chickens in general, you probably got that set up. But we promise you, get this stuff ahead of time because butchering day is here before you know it. Mm -hmm. That 10 to 12 weeks goes by like this. Yeah. And they say, you know, like, oh no, we got chickens we got to butcher and we don't have anything set up or ready to do that. So take it from the experience of a family of four that has been raising their own chickens um, for over two years now, right? This is probably year three, round three that we've been doing this. Um, ask the questions down below if we missed something out or if you have questions about that, we're happy to answer them because the one thing that we strive for you all to do with our channel here is to grow your own food. You know, a lot of people stick with the gardens, but meat for meat eaters is an important place and that's one of the most antibiotic, antibiotic, no, that's not what I'm trying to say what they pump in it, uh, animals, the GMO, the antibiot antibiotics, there we go, antibiotics, GMOs, all the different stuff. Meat is one of the worst case scenarios that you can buy from a grocery store. That stuff is pumped with all kinds of crap. And so it's very important to grow your own if you can, and chickens are by far the easiest that you can do. All right, y'all, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do down below. We love you. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.